A sick child can make you feel helpless as a parent. It's a reality the Nash family faced 23 years ago with their daughter, Molly, who was born with a rare genetic disease, one that would eventually kill her. So they decided to have another baby to save their little girl. And we sat down with the family to find out where they are now and how they feel about that decision that captured the attention of the world. When we discussed it at our table, it wasn't for the world to debate. I think that was the controversy, is what have we created? How far would you go to save your child? It was my baby. And you know what? I was going to take care of her no matter what she had. What would you risk? I could be killing my daughter, and I signed the paper to say go do it. To give them a chance at life. She's not supposed to survive, and she's not supposed to make it through. Well, too bad. She's going to. When we first met the Nashes, they were in the middle of a very private battle. Their daughter, Molly, born with Fanconi anemia, an extremely rare genetic disorder, was dealt a death sentence. Some have thumbs, some don't have thumbs, some have kidneys, some are missing a kidney. I mean, but ultimately they all develop bone marrow failure. For the Nashes, that moment came when Molly was just six. Unable to find a bone marrow match, they would be faced with a big decision one the world would soon weigh in on. When we did this, sitting at our kitchen table, this was a way to have a healthy family. This was possibly a way to protect our future children from going through what Molly went through. The whole thing was extremely cutting edge 17 years ago. That's where fertility doctor William Schoolcraft came in. Through IVF, he helped the Nashes have a second child, selecting an embryo without the Fanconi gene, meaning if the baby's tissue matched Molly's, the baby's cord blood had the potential to save her life. It has the stem cells that were needed to uh, replenish her bone marrow and uh, regenerate these cells that she was genetically lacking. And it had to come from somebody whose tissue type was incredibly close to her, so her body wouldn't reject these cells. Their decision made headlines around the world. Suddenly, the Nashes found themselves at the center of an ethical debate, one about genetic testing and designer babies, with backlash over a savior sibling some dubbed Frankenstein baby, and criticism over using genetic screening to have a child with a trait to benefit someone else. If it was you, and you were in my shoes, I think you'd react a whole lot differently. And the people that would continue with I'd let my child die, I tip my hat to them. Good for you that you could watch your child die and not do something. Okay. Fast forward 17 years and today Molly is a thriving 23 year old, driven and determined. I've adapted to what everybody else is doing and did it my way. Molly's way means learning to dance, ski, and act in a small body twisted by an awful disease. I don't think I'm much different than anybody else. I just do it differently. And she does it with the brother who saved her at her side. It kind of brings us more together than most siblings because he gave me something that I could never give him anything like back for. So I kind of like owe my life literally to him. I like being able to help her. Yeah. It, gives it, you a, yeah. it gives you a very, a very heavy purpose. Say what you want to say, but to me, he saved my life. And I, I don't care what anybody else thinks, he saved my life. I just want her to have a long, fulfilled life. You know, I mean, I want her to outlive me. I want her to be 80, but I, I also don't want her to um, suffer. So, you know, we just hope that medicine continues to advance and um, that we stay two steps ahead of everything. Two steps ahead of everything and to the ends of the earth, they say, when asked how far they will go to save their child. And the Nashes went on to have a third healthy child and used IVF to ensure that child also did not have the Fanconi gene.